Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk on who broke the build using Cuttle to improve end-to-end -end testing and release faster. Uh, nobody, no one wants to. Nobody, no one wants to be responsible for breaking the build. But what can you do as a developer to avoid being a bad guy? How can project leads enable their teams to? reduce the occurrence of broken builds. Have you ever seen this? OK, by the way, how many of your managers here? OK. Have you ever been that way to your developers? OK. So the manager would ask who has actually broken the build. Uh, the developer says, hey, I don't know, probably I would check with my team and see uh, who has actually broken the build, or probably it's me. Okay. Okay. Let's have a quick introduction about me. I'm Ram, uh, a senior software engineer at uh, R&D Bangalore, JFrog. I'm passionate about open source and love playing table tennis. Okay. Uh, let's have a quick agenda around what we would like to discuss today. Uh, in this session, we will cover our quick history of our testing challenges and what led us to Cuttle. Okay? Uh, it's a open source uh, Kubernetes testing tool. I would probably talk about it a little later. And the benefits of our new testing approach, which is easy to configure and minimal investment and how we combine Cuttle and CI pipelines for more streamlined testing and few broken builds. So as part of my agenda, I would probably cover through a development environment how an ideal development environment should look like. I would also talk about end-to-end -end testing uh, and also Cuttle, which is a Kubernetes test tool, CNCF project, and a quick demo to summarize everything that what we have learned. My demo time would take around 10 minutes, so bear with me on that. Let's start with an overview. Uh, an ideal development environment, say I'm a developer, probably a Golang or a Java developer, would develop on Mac or Windows, wherever he is comfortable with. And most of them do a development on Windows, and then they do a release on a Unix machine or a Linux machine. But when I'm onboarded to a new team, ideally I would expect everything to be working seamlessly. Say, for example, I joined a new team and I need some instructions to how to set up an environment. So generally, with my previous experience, I would go to a wiki page and uh, pull some of the documentation and add some scripts, run those scripts to set up my environment. So what we are looking at is something, something like a, a automation to have a single click setup so that a developer can just clone that repo and just do a single click install so that it would set up the entire development en environment for him. And the main challenge that most developers face is, hey, I develop, I, it works for me locally, and it fails on production or test environments. So that's more to do with the operating systems that we use or the dependencies that we use. So uh, ideally, we should have an environment which is very similar to production environment as similar to dev environment to, to develop and test locally. As I've previously said, it should be as same as the production environment that we are deploying into. OK, how does uh, an ideal dev environment can be set up using some automation? So in my previous companies, I used to do the same thing, setting up uh, a dev environment using the manual instructions, which can be easily automating using scripts. So that would mean uh, uh, the benefits that it would have is uh, something like if, if a developer does that manually, it would take a couple of days. If we have automated script, it would probably take probably less than 10 minutes to set up everything and their dependencies. And most importantly, which is very equivalent to production environment. 
So let's start with the problem statement that we have, OK? How many of you run end-to-end -end tests locally here on your uh, dev machines? And do you use some tools around that? Playwright. Huh? Playwright. Playwright. What does that do? It's an end-to-end -end test framework. Okay. Linking around, launching the browser, what you're seeing, assigning user rules. Okay. And those are, run, those are very equivalent to what you have it in production? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So most, I mean, in my previous experience and most dev teams don't run end-to-end -end tests locally, okay? And most of these end-to-end -end tests are run in a CI, CD, something like a Jenkins or some pipelines where they raise a pull request. It would take some hours to run those end-to-end -end tests. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. So... Let's try to understand the problem statement here, uh, where I, as a developer, want to develop a feature, OK? What I would do is I would first create a feature branch. Uh, I have a design document or something to go with it, write that code, add some local unit tests, OK? And test it locally, and then do a push to that remote uh, Git branch, OK? This is the usual development cycle that we follow, OK? So mostly, I mean, where end-to-end -end tests are remotely ran, these end-to-end -end tests sometimes fails due to some environment issues, or maybe something to do with uh, uh, something to do with the code actually. Okay. So what would a developer do is, if the test failed, developer would first fix it locally. Okay. Pushes the code again. Somebody reviews it. Okay. And then probably run those tests on an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, remote CI CD server, which would mean the, the round trip of actually fixing or identifying an issue is huge in terms of you commit it locally, push it, and then on a remote CI CD server, those tests run, okay? But uh, once these end-to-end -end tests are success successful and somebody approves your PR or a merge request, you would generally merge it to a master branch or a main branch. This is the ideal, I mean, dev cycle that most people will follow, okay? Okay, so just a graphical description of what I was talking about. So when a developer writes his code, okay, he writes some unit tests, and then if something fails, he would fix it locally and rerun those unit tests again, okay? But uh, when when, you, when we have remote end-to-end -end tests, he would raise a pull request, and these tests are run in a remote CI CD server, okay? So if that fails, the round cycle of he identifying an issue, whether it's an environment issue or a, or a bug that he has identified is huge in terms of getting back. Sometimes in, my, uh, in our uh, remote CI CD servers, that end-to-end -end tests might run something like four, four hours to eight hours or maybe in days as well, okay, to, find, to have a complete suit of uh, things. So is there any uh, better way of doing this? So at JFrog, we were actually evaluating uh, some of the open source tools, and we thought, hey, uh, why don't we actually leverage some of the tools that we have in the open source environment and probably run these end-to-end -end tests locally, okay? So at that time, we were probably uh, more cloud-native way of doing that. So, so let's, let's try to understand if we can run these end-to-end -end tests locally, okay? Instead of remote end-to-end uh, -end test, use something like a local end-to-end -end test. So we were fig figuring out, is there any tool that can help us in doing that, okay? which would mean when you run those end-to-end -end tests locally, uh, if some tests fail, okay, you have this very similar environment that you have in a remote CI CD server, so which are very locally, so you would, you would just commit those changes and fix those. You don't need to do a round trip of whether my tests are failing due to an environment issue or, a, or another issue, okay? This way, uh, which actually reduces the round trip of issues to fix and save some time. So what I was referring to here is, instead of having the remote 
CI/CD server test, pull them into your local machine so that they run parallelly to your unit tests. Okay, unit tests are more like just uh, a module test that you would write. End-to-end -end tests are more specific where you have some integration and with other components that you have. So bring them on to your local, okay, and see if you can probably run those tests locally, okay. Which would mean uh, you need to have a better configuration of your computer to run these tests, okay, which most people currently have, okay. And while we were evaluating that, so we found a tool called Cuttle. Uh, so in talking to within our teams, we discovered that many developers are not running sufficient end-to-end uh, -end tests in their local environments. It's because it's very difficult to actually set up those uh, and admin administer those environments in, in an efficient way. So that's why we decided to rethink our local testing with some, uh, to avoid some uh, headaches and valuable time wasted. So at that time, we evaluated a tool called Cuttil. Connecting our Cuttil to our CI build has empowered our developers to easily configure a dev, dev environment which is very similar to final test environment. So let's start what Cuttil is, okay? Let's try to understand what Cuttil does and uh, how it can be integrated as a local testing environment, okay? So Cuttil is primarily a, a toolkit for writing tests, okay? Primarily designed for testing operators, okay? So Cuttil was actually a sponsored project from Kudo Builder where they were actually testing operators, okay? So Kudo Builder team built this, Cuttle, which is a YAML-based uh, simple, so you don't need to worry. Say, for example, I being a Java developer or a Go developer, doesn't need to bother should I learn a new tool around having an end-to-end -end test, okay? And also, it accelerates with an AML-based uh, approach. It accelerates the ability to create end-to-end -end testing environments. So, for example, I want to test my application on multiple uh, versions of Kubernetes. Say, for example, 1.19 being uh, the oldest one and 1.29 being the latest one. So, if I were to write a code spinning up each of these environments and testing my thing, which is a tedious process, you might need to write a long Java code or a Go code to spin up these namespaces, create, uh, create these namespaces, launch your application, test it, and probably uh, tear them down at the bottom, okay? So, how do you install this cuttle? Okay, if being a uh, if you are using a Mac, you can do a pro tap kudo builder tap. That's the kudo builder project that I was referring to. Okay, and just do a brew install cuttle CLI. Okay, and if you are on a Linux, you can use a, a kubectl crew install cuttle. And cuttle is both a CLI tool as well as a uh, API testing tool that can be integrated into your Go code. So if you are a Go developer, you can go get it as a module and then GitHub, Kudo Builder, Cuttle. This can be integrated into your API code, okay, as well. So my talk is more specific to the CLI way of testing it, okay, which can be integrated into any project, okay. So Cuttle is primarily for those developers who wants to test uh, your applications on multiple versions of Kubernetes, as I've previously said. And, and if you are an application admin who wants to create, I mean, creation of a new Kubernetes environment, say your dev team wants to have a Kubernetes environment, you can just spin it off using Cuttle, okay, and integrate it with it. And, and also, if you are a developer that you want to test operator without writing Go code, okay, say you have an Helm-based operator, you want to test it to see if everything works out of the box. Okay, Cuttle has main three configurations. One is a test suit, and a test step, and an assertion step, okay? Test suit is more like a suit where you define a, a Cuttle configuration file, where you define what, what all commands that you need to run, okay? Or a commands or a specific suit that you want to add. So let's, for, uh, for example, you can see here, Cuttle is more like a CRD, okay? Uh, custom resource definition, you can see the API versions that is defined over there is a Cuttle Dev V1 Beta 1. 
and a kind. A kind is a test suit. So as I told, there are three components. One is a test suit, test step, and a test assertion. Okay. We will look at both of them uh, later in, the, in later in my presentation. You can see line number three. You have start kind. So if you want to test uh, cattle using your own local clusters using Docker or Rancher desktop, you can use kind start as true. So in my demo, I would probably set it as true. Okay, and a name that you can give any name and the test directory. So you have your code of tests that are actually written in. Uh, in a folder, you can probably put that test directory as end to end, and the commands. So, uh, the beautiful, uh, the beauty of this cuttle is you can invoke a script which you are already using for uh, invoking your end to end test. Say you have a test script that you are already using for testing your end to end. You can actually call them. It's more like a prerequisite or a precursor to uh, some of the components that you would be launching at a later stage as a test step. So in this, I've actually added uh, uh, a, a Helm repository. I would be actually showcasing Artifactory OSS as part of my demo. So I've added a Helm repository where I would be testing the uh, Helm install of that. Okay, and then the last command is the uh, timeout. So, so this is a test suit where you define the timeout that a test suit needs. Say, for example, your end-to-end -end test might take 30 minutes, so you can add a timeout. If that if it reaches be beyond that 300 seconds or 30 minutes, uh, the 300 seconds would be, and the timeout that I mentioned here is seconds, not uh, things. I was just citing an example where if you mention and if it breaches the 300 seconds, the test would be a failure, okay? Next is the test step, okay? Where you define a step, in your in your suit of tests, kind you can see the kind as test step for the test suit it is test suit okay, and you can actually invoke them or the scripts using commands which is a good way of doing it so you don't have a dependency so in your code base if you already have some tests you can actually invoke it via uh, commands here so suit is a collection of steps number of steps that you have. Next is the assertion step. So before I go there, I would probably want to explain what I'm doing in a test step, okay? So what I'm trying to do is I would like to install an application, okay? Which is a stateful set application, okay? And I would like to assert to see if the stateful set application actually comes up post the install. This is more like a install test that I'm trying to do as part of my demo. So what I would do as part of the assertion here is uh, API version v1, it's a stateful set application, then I would verify the re ready replicas as one. So since I'm launching in the test step one, one replica, I would also expect the, the desired state to be one, one replica over there. So you can actually add n number of assertions over there saying that, hey, if a timeout happens, say, let's go back, I can probably add a timeout here as well, saying that if my install doesn't happen in 10 minutes, you can probably cancel that, or you can you can uh, set this step as failure. Okay, so the final uh, test suit structure would look like something like a, a demo application here, and uh, a folder called test, under which I have an end-to-end. -end. So let's take an example of a demo application. I have some tests, which are end-to-end -end tests. I have two tests, install and a scale test or something like that, and a cuttle test.yaml. This is a suit file. These are steps uh, each. Have you ever worked on a tool called Flyway before? Okay. Flyway is used for database migrations, okay, where you have, you define n number of scripts there and Flyway would run it for you, okay? So it's more like automating of those uh, SQLs that you have, okay? So Cuttle follows a similar approach where you can define the test with, uh, with the index number 0, 01, 02, 03. So that would mean the test would run, 0, 01 would 
run first and the next the preceding would the next would be 0, 01 0, 02 0, 03 it has a very similar approach to flyway if you are familiar with uh, database migrations i mean we use both that's the way i i probably try to compare it with that okay okay let's have a quick demo of what i was actually referring to okay let me do a tree structure of uh, Okay, it's not showing up. Give me a second. Okay, I can only see the uh, PPT. Can somebody help me out here? Okay, so I have displays. Yeah, I've done that. Extend your display. Do you want a mirror? You want to show us a mirror? Yeah, sure. So I'm just deleting the logs that I've previously run. So just ignore them. So I have a uh, demo setup app where I would be testing uh, an install of an Artifactory OSS version, free open source one, and then doing an assertion on both of them. So I have a test uh, suit file. If it is not visible, I would probably increase that size. Okay. Okay. I have the test suit site where I'm setting the start kind as true. So, which would mean I would launch kind clusters locally to test it, uh, the name and the report format. So, this is very important. Where, if if you want a report of the final end-to-end -end test that ran and a report out of us to see which one has actually successfully passed or failed, you can get an XML report or a JSON report. Okay. The test directories that I'm in is a test folder under which I have an end-to-end -end test that I've written. I'm just adding a Helm repository and then doing an assertion test of it. So let us let me go back to the uh, console. Okay, so this is my structure that I have. And what I would be doing is kubectl cuttle test. So what it would do is, it would create a kind cluster locally using the rancher desktop that I have, okay? And run, create a couple of namespaces, run this test. If everything is successful, it would come back and show me a report of JSON report saying that which tests have successfully run. Everything is done locally here, okay? Using kind clusters. And if you want to actually use an existing Kubernetes cluster, you can probably set this kind cluster as false. So which is very equivalent to running these tests on a remote uh, Kubernetes cluster as well. Uh, these tests would actually run uh, around 10 minutes or seven to eight minutes that I've seen. So let me go back to show you the Cuttle documentation that we have on GitHub, as well as the uh, documentation that we have on the site itself, okay. So, uh, so this is Kudo Builder's project where we have Cuttle, okay? Uh, this is primarily a Kubernetes test tool written for testing operators, but it can be used for testing any Kubernetes objects, okay? And we have a clear documentation of getting started, how to use Cuttle, okay? Uh, you can use, as I've mentioned, you can use kubectl and a test path to the suit. If you are within the directory, you don't need to specify the path. And there are some CLI integrations that I talked about where you can probably pass these as an example. I mean, this is a CLI uh, API integration. So if you are a Go developer, you can probably import this 
uh, add this and add the test harness suit around that, OK? Uh, my talk is more focused on the CLI thing, so I would probably go through this uh, one more time to see. So there are a few examples, uh, assertions, and uh, you can do an assertions and errors as well. Say that if your assertion is successful or if there is a failure, you can actually catch that as well. Uh, you can probably create some specific Kubernetes objects and then destroy them or post the creation of your uh, tests as well. So you can go around this and see the documentation around uh, how Cuttle can be used, extended in, in your projects as well. So what I've done in this demo is I took the JFrog Artifactory OSS version, which is the Helm installer that I have, just added the, you can go back here, I've just installed an open source version of Artifactory here, OK? And then I'm doing an assertion based on, the, uh, uh, based on the replicas that I have. In a split mode, Artifactory can be uh, run in a split to mode as well, where you can show. So let me go back to the console and show you where we are. So I'm exporting the cube. Uh, Cube config file. So you can see here, it says adding a starting kind cluster, and it says it is running two tests. It has it has two tests. One is run, pause, and continue. So it is creating two namespaces in each of them. So let's see those uh, kind cluster access via uh, canines. Canines is a tool to graphically view these kind clusters. Okay. Uh, so so I'm going into these default namespaces thing. You can see it has launched, Kind has launched two, uh, two, cluster, two namespaces. So and it is, prob it is installing the Artifactory. So the f it is the first test where, it is the second test where Artifactory is running without the split enabled containers. And we have another test where it is running with all the internal microservices as well. Okay, So I'm running both the tests. And good thing about Kind is it runs all these tests parallelly. So if you have eight tests, it which can be run parallelly as well. So you don't need to worry about whether this test would run first, this test would run. All these tests would run parallelly, which would actually save a lot, lot of time for us. So <clears throat> let's dig into the logs to see what is happening. Okay, so there are two tests. First is the install, and another is the split test. So it is running the actual command, Helm upgrade install Artifactory OSS. Okay, and the second one is Helm upgrade. I've also passed some of the uh, additional parameters which are actually not needed, but this is something that I wanted to show you is the split services. So these are two different tests, and what would happen is it would. So let me see what is internally happening. It is downloading the images of each one of them and try to run those tests. Let's go back to the uh, documentation around this and see. Uh, so as I've told you, test suit has a uh, uh, list of uh, supported things, something like you can go to a different directory and run these tests as well. You can have these manifest directories. So if you are testing operators, you can probably put your CRs in a manifest directory, and it applies directly. Okay, this was primarily developed for testing operators. So the CRDs and CRs can also be tested using these uh, manifest directories there. And there is a uh, nice feature that Kind also provides, where you can see node cache images. So if you are running these tests more frequently, you can actually cache these images locally, so that you don't need to. Uh, run it again and again. Okay, that way, say for example, Artifactory image size is around one GB. That would actually save a lot of time for you downloading every time when you pull that. So, how do you configure this node cache? Here is in the suit file, you you can define kind node cache is equals to true. So, in the subsequent runs, first run it would download the images, but in the subsequent run, it would actually cache those images locally, and you can run those tests locally, which would be very faster. So that's the reason I've told you that the initial uh, test would take something like seven to eight minutes to download the Docker images and do the test. If you are using that 
cache thing, it would probably take a couple of minutes to launch Artifactory on your local. So you could see it is actually waiting for this test to run. OK, let's see the Artifactory is starting with So what would eventually happen is Artifactory install would happen, then the test assertion should would assert that uh, uh, ready replicas are one. If it is true, then it would actually destroy this namespace and tear off everything that we had using the suit. So you can see here, let me just stop the logs here. So it launched the Artifactory OSS. The product version is this one, the latest version. And once this Artifactory starts up, it would actually destroy or it would do an assertion and then do the check. So this can be primarily used for testing any API tests as well. Say that you have an API and you have wrote some tests. You can actually use uh, the request response using curl or any, any, thought, any, any free tools that you ha have. Uh, this talk, I primarily focused on install test. This can be used for an API testing or any such things as well. So you can see here, it has successfully tested this assertion and then deleting the namespace. So you, what you would finally see is, you can see here, one namespace has been deleted, the other namespace is also being getting deleted. You are not writing any code to do this. This is completely taken care by Cuttle, okay? So you can see here, Cuttle has two tests. It has ran those two tests and it has passed them. So let's go back to the report. So I was report, uh, referring to a report in, in the suit file, report JSON. You can see a report has been generated with this a JSON report with two tests ran, uh, the test name and two test name, how much time does it took and the assertion that happened. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so these are the references that we have. Uh, Cuttle documentation is mentioned over there with the GitHub Kudo Builder Cuttle. And there is a dedicated Slack channel on Kubernetes where you have uh, Kudo as the uh, channel name. And uh, I've actually directly, so this presentation would be shared to all the presentees. You can probably refer to that. And there is another tool that open source tool that we have shown is the canines that is used for graphical view of Kubernetes clusters. OK, so as I've mentioned in my agenda, let's have a quick summary of what we have learned in this session. Cuttle is an open source free tool which can be used for uh, uh, writing end-to-end -end test and doing an end-to-end -end testing, local end-to-end -end testing, which would mean if the test end-to-end -end test pass, you don't need, I mean, you, I mean, you are more confident that your code has actually, uh, you doesn't have uh, major bugs, which would mean few broken builds. That would mean developers can release faster, okay? Which would mean happy developers. Any questions? Could you be more specific with an example, please? So, so just say maybe I have uh, two, two web applications that, that rely on each other. Re rely on each other, okay. So, so for end-to-end -end testing, I'm like, I, I have a, two different teams working on it. How do I have management of saying, this team pushed to their repo, it needs to be merged, they need to test it out. And before I even say that it's allowed to be merged, it needs to be tested end-to-end. -end. So kind of Sure that they're always compatible and, and the test that, and I didn't know if you had anything in your CI 
Okay, so uh, we, in our company as well, we had these problems where one, uh, one web app would be dependent on other web app, web application as well. So what we do is versioning, okay? And the supporting backward compatibility versions that we have. So what we do is say, uh, I'm bundling a web application as a Helm chart or something, I would probably specify the chart version of the application version, which is probably compatible. So what I would do is say two applications on different versions, which are doing frequent changes. What I would do is I would also pull those, the web application and probably integrate into this testing suit with a specific backward compatibility there. That way you are actually testing the complete flow rather than independently testing uh, either of them. So for example, A is dependent on B, okay? So what in, in the B's dependencies that I would add as a dependency chart of A and probably, so similarly we have a platform, a JFrog platform, where each of these applications are dependencies. So what we do at a, at a high level is adding these dependencies as part of our CI testing so that each version of these are actually compatible with each other. So for example, uh, you have a end product which would consume three or four products, okay? So we would want to test the end product as well when we do an end-to-end -end testing, right? It's not that I test A, you test B, and at the end, when you combine each of them, everything fails apart, okay? So the plan is have a component level, something like a Helm chart as a dependency chart, okay? So that the final chart that we would have, the combination of all these, are actually tested derived from that. So for example, if I'm building a new release of a component A, I would also bump that application version in my Helm charts so that that component is also being tested at an end level. Go test, right, go so test. test the internal logic, the right. Um, and let's say I plan to use Kata. So it takes care of my infrastructure and it sets up, it deploys my application. Right. Now I want to check that the application itself is working. Right. And I have those go tests, right? Right. So how do you run that test? Like, is it through commands? Right, yes, through commands. So what I would do is first set up the infrastructure that I need launch the application, and then use your Go testing modules to test it. So something like, I mean, primarily Cuttle takes care of the infrastructure and everything, and using the commands in the test step, you can call those tests using a script that you already have. So you don't need to do anything uh, extraordinarily to integrate Cuttle into your end-to-end -end test suit. And just, uh, sorry. Um, Go ahead. No, I mean, you don't, I mean, you can just disable kind, okay, and if you are using an AWS or an Azure or a GCP, you can just launch that cluster. So kind would look for a context, okay? So if you are switching a context, it would probably launch that in that in that uh, Kubernetes cluster. So the reason I was asking is because then, uh, like, you specified kind through. Right. So, could have so AWS no, 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 yeah. <laughs> kind false would mean an external uh, context. No, I mean, uh, uh, could you uh, rephrase your question? I did not really get that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing that I, I'm trying to avoid is to use uh, the plugin. Um, obviously, I just want to uh, package everything, like, for example, like, like Helm chart, like when I can just 
private exams. But in this case, can I just put the, the, the CRs Right, you can do that. So uh, the only difficulty using a, I mean, CRs or uh, using Helm charts is, I mean, CR disk can't be changed during a Helm upgrade, okay? That's you know, but CRs can be packaged as a Helm and you can probably use that. So the execution, uh, in order to execute this, do I need to do it through the, uh, through the, uh, the, the plugin or? I... No, not really. Uh, so there is a directory where you can probably put all your CRs and it would directly apply. You don't need Helm charts as well. This is primarily written for operators, so CR's approach is already taken care. Yeah, I just, I just wonder if they have like a, a chip kernel operator, which uh, again, also is telling you the process. Oh, no, not really. Yeah. Any further questions? Thank you.